All right, on to the optical activity part. So exciting, so bright. Have to wear shades there for a second. Um, so the physical properties of both enantiomers are exactly the same as we've seen, except how they interact with polarized light and how they interact with other chiral compounds. And we're going to talk about how these compounds interact with polarized light and that's what's called optical activity. Now, an equal molar mixture of a pair of enantiomers is called a racemic mixture. And uh, racemic, uh, racemic mixture equals 50% R and 50% S. Enantiomers. Teomers. And just to be clear, a racemic mixture is not optically active, not visibly optically active. Because the 50% that is going to interact with the light in one specific direction uh, is going to be canceled by the 50% that affects light in the other direction. And therefore, to observe optical activity, you must have more of one than the other. So optical activity, ideally, you have one enantiomer. Ideally, only one enantiomer. In practice, you can have an excess of one, say 70% R, 30% S, and you can account for that fact as well, although that's not going to be the focus of what we're doing. Now, um, in this slide, we've got uh, uh, a picture of light. Light is a wave. We talked about this in first semester general chemistry more than second semester. Um, but light is an electromagnetic wave with a specific wavelength and frequency. Uh, it has an electric and a magnetic field. And we're going to focus on just, typical, just the electric field. And so uh, there is a magnetic field. We are going to ignore it and typically draw an, uh, a wave uh, something like that, and it is traveling to the right, and it has magnitude, um, and it has a wavelength, which we usually use Greek letter lambda for. Okay, and in fact, what I just drew is, so if I draw only one, that is polarized light. meaning one wave going like this towards you, going up and down, up and down as it comes towards you. Now, um, typically light from a light bulb or a fluorescent light or typically light sources are what are called unpolarized. And unpolarized would have a plane like this, you would have all of the planes of polarization still all coming to you, but one would be like this, and one would be like this, and it would have every single angle of this uh, polarization, let's say. And so while we will typically draw polarized light with just a single arrow, meaning it's got one direction that the electric field wave is going, we will typically draw unpolarized light with uh, eight, um, with the idea that it's really representing all of the polarizations, okay? And that how you take sunlight, which is now hitting me in the face, and turn it into polarized light is you use a polarizer. 
and the polarizer blocks some of the light. That's why I'm darker behind the polarizer. And it blocks um, all of the polarizations. Uh, this one does. See, it's got an up and down arrow there, except for the light that's going up and down. So between here, where there's every polarization, and the other side of the polarizer, now it's just going up and down as it gets into my eye, or as the light that reflects off my eye goes towards you, it goes through a polarizer as well. And that's why you see less light um, and why it appears a little darker. And <clears throat> the next slide is a little picture of two polarizers. And um, so here we have unpolarized light Again, sunlight or light from most light sources. It goes through a polarizer. To get just one polarization. So this is polarized light. And then because these two polarizers, so here's another polarizer, because they line up. And I've got two of them here. I've got one that's going up and down. I've got another that's going up and down. You can see that the light goes through them. And that's the picture on the left that I just marked up. On the right, I have a polarizer. So I start with unpolarized light again. I pass it through a polarizer. And then I pass it through a polarizer that is perpendicular. And you can see that no light or perfectly no light, but in practice, it's almost completely reduced. <clears throat> so it says no light passes through, but very little light passes through when polarizers are crossed. And so you can control the polarization of light getting through one and two polarizers. And now what we're going to do is between the two polarizers, we're going to put <clears throat> excuse me, a chiral compound dissolved in uh, water usually, though it could be dissolved in other things. And what we're going to see is that's going to affect the polarization of the light. And uh, compounds that can rotate plain polarized light are optically active. They have, um, and only chiral compounds are optically active. All right. So this is actually an instrument that they typically use in organic chemistry. Um, but we're talking about it now in our unit in second semester general chemistry for organic chemistry. It's called a polarimeter. And here inside here is where the chiral compound goes. Dissolved in water, typically. You have to start with a light source. You polarize the light. Then you pass it through a sample of the optically active uh, solution, which is a chiral compound in solution. Um, and of course, uh, I should repeat this. So it has to have, ideally, it's a pure R or a pure S. That's uh, the best case. Um, but anyway, what we're showing here is that the chiral compound takes this initial light that comes in and it rotates the plane of polarization and this example shows it perfectly rotating at 90 degrees. Doesn't always happen like that. In practice, since the analyzer, which is the polarizer on the other end, can be turned. So you'll start with a polarization. Then on the other side, let's see if this works, uh, the analyzer, you can rotate to find uh, how much the light has been an um, rotated by the optically active compounds. And so that's how we tell whether two things, one is when compounds are optically active, what compounds are, and then some of them we will see rotate the light one way, say R, uh, the R version of the compound, rectus, while the S one will then rotate it the other way. And as we'll talk about R versus S, which we decided based on the priority order of the uh, substituents, the groups um, attached, bonded to the carbon, the chiral carbon. Um, 
R and S have no relationship to whether which way the light goes. You always have to do the experiment to tell that.